Yeah. All right, well, let's get it started. Let's get this over. So, uh, good evening, everybody, to the Fortuna Planning Commission for December 8th. Um, the meeting is being held in accordance with the Brown Act, um, the governor's emergency COVID orders. Um, start off with the opening flag salute. Um, we're going to do the flag salute. I'm not standing. Please don't take any offense by all this, uh, with all this weirdness going on. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with Thank liberty you. and justice for all. Okay, can we get a roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner Blakely? Here. And Commissioner Bradley is not here. Commissioner Church? Here. Commissioner Halley? Here. Uh, Commissioner McClendon? Well, I'll let Liz announce that. <laughs> Chairman Mobley? Yes. All right, and then that's it for this evening. Okay, get approval of the November 24th meeting. The minutes, please. Anybody want to make a motion on that? I'll make a motion to approve the um, last meeting minutes. <laughs> the November 24th minutes, good. November 24th. Perfect. So I want to second that. Jason, can you second that? Sure, I'll second that. I just didn't know if I was supposed to, or if I can be an alternate or not, or how does that work? Since uh, we don't have everybody here, so you're in. Okay, then I'll second that. Now uh, you can make a motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, there he is. How you doing, Sandy? Okay, can uh, we get a, a roll call on that? I'll vote. Or can can we do that on this one too? No, we this one we do, I believe. Need to do the roll call. Commissioner Blakely? Here. Commissioner Church? Yes. Commissioner Halley? Yes. And Chairman Mobley. Yes. Right. Okay. So oral comment from the public. So anybody out there that wants to uh, talk about anything that's not on the agenda tonight can speak. Uh, remember, please remember that, be advised that all, that by law, the commission cannot deliberate or take any action on anything that is not on the agenda. So if you'd like to uh, comment, please call the number, use the passcode. We'll give you a couple minutes. To go over that. Katie, we seen anything going on? We do not have any public comment at this moment. Okay, so we're gonna close public comment. If somebody kicks in, please let us know. All right, let's start off the business at hand. Uh, public hearing considered approval of a subdivision that proposed to sub subdivide 23, 2000 or excuse me 23,017 square feet parcel into two parcels 13,900 square feet and a 10,300 square foot parcel the address is 2070 Newburg Road so can we get some background on that please Liz you're muted 
Thank you, commissioners. I'm going to go right to the sh uh, screen. Chris read the agenda title, so we know what we're looking at. This is a minor subdivision of an of a developed parcel that's located um, in the center of town, basically. This is located on Newburgh. Um, it's the southwest corner of Newburgh and Lawndale, right across from the elementary school. And this shows, this is an aerial that shows the property line and the solid line, and then the um, potential split that would split off the existing single family on the north side, and then the four multifamily units on the south side. This is in an area of um, single family, mostly to the east, and then multifamily, and a mix of single family to the west and to the south. So this is an older, you know, developed at a time when the rest of this Longdale area was developed with really similar, um, you know, single family and multifamily. And so they want to create the split to, um, you know, basically just get the single family um, separated um, and then the four multifamily would be on a separate lot as well. And here you can see the zoning. Um, so the parcel is located here and it is in the R16 zone. It's right on the border of the RM multifamily and it's to the south of public facility that's for the elementary school. So um, the multifamily units are non-conforming but they're isn't any development proposed with this, so there won't be any change to that non-conforming status. Um, the, the zoning code does describe that, that non-conforming uses are allowed to continue. And um, there's certain, certain situations where they can be changed with a use permit, but basically they are allowed to um, continue, you know, that's um, being grandfathered in. So we are not increasing the degree of non-conformity here by you know, proposing any development. And this is the tentative map. Newburgh Road is at the top and Lawndale is here on the east side. And this just basically shows the property lines, the potential split, the single family home. You can see a garage and a couple of sheds here. And then the four apartment buildings um, with the carport lawn area in the in between like a little courtyard and in the front and then a, sh a storage shed in the back um this is a developed part of town so the utilities are in place the subdivision has been reviewed by the city engineer the public works department city surveyor um it did get referred out to utility agencies including pg and e sudden link at&t um, and the facilities, again, all of the facilities are in place. The only um, physical change would be the need for a clean out, a sewer clean out on um, parcel two, the multifamily parcel. And that's, you know, just kind of a, a minor change that won't even include, won't require any improvement plans. Um, So infrastructure is existing appropriately sized. Um, the fire department didn't have any comments. The roadway is, you know, full um, collector and our sort of arterial on Newburgh um, with adequate access for the fire department. Um, and the environmental review, it's an infill development, no, potential significant impacts, no, no construction. Uh, pretty minimal conditions of approval, really just paying taxes, paying the fees, submitting a final map to get recorded, installing the um, sanitary sewer clean out. And actually that's it. So it's a pretty minor and straightforward subdivision. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Anybody have anything for staff? I don't see that the applicant has not joined us, but he has been informed of the meeting and he did receive a property notice and all of the neighbors within 300 feet have been notified as well. 
Oh, I will add that the city um, installed the sidewalk. So for a long time, that side of uh, Lawndale was missing sidewalks and that's all been completely upgraded. As, you know, you may be aware if you've driven on that part of Newburgh. That was all done under a Safe Routes to School grant. All right. Anybody have anything for staff? Questions, comments? Sounds pretty straightforward to me. Okay, not hearing any. Open it up for public comment. We do have somebody that just joined us. I'm not sure. Um, hey. Is that Mr. Gladden? Yes, it is. There he is. Uh, yeah, there is uh, two sewer cleanouts in the duplex. I don't know if that's what they were talking about. Oh, okay. No, I'm not sure. I assumed that there was. Um, was that for two lines, two sewer lines? Uh, well, uh, the, the one and two, the duplex in the back, um, there's a clean out by them. And then there's a clean out in front of number four before it goes out to the street. Let me see. This is a condition from the city engineer. Sewer lateral clean out should be installed at the back of the sidewalk in front of parcel two. So I, you know, that's a minor thing that can be worked out with him. Okay. As to what he wants it to serve and where it needs to be located. Okay. Yeah. That's not, not an issue if that's needed to be done. All right. Anybody have any co uh, questions or comments for Mr. Gladden? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to open it up to public comment. So, Katie, can you flash that back up there again, please? So, again, anybody like to uh, make a comment or talk about this? Please call in. We'll give you a couple minutes. Why we're waiting is any of uh, the planning commissioners have anything they'd like to bring up about it. You guys are not talkative tonight. This probably has to do with my report writing and presentation skills. I've answered all of the questions that you might you have. You got it down, Liz. On this complex matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, and a good job too, we might add. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So Katie, we're definitely not hearing it from anybody. If there anybody's out there looking to call in, please do. We're gonna move on. So back to, to the planning commissioners. Again, anything? If not, we're looking for a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number P-2020-30529. A resolution of the planning commission of the city of Fortuna approving a tentative map of a 5.99 acre parcel into two parcels, 0 0.65 acres, and 0 0.51 acre in size. And get a roll call, Katie. Commissioner Blakely. Yes. Commissioner Church. Yes. Commissioner Halley. <clears throat> yes. Chairman Mobley. Yes. There you go, Al, you're ready to rock. Well, thank you very much and have a good night. You too. Okay, moving on to our second one, a consideration of an 18 month extension of approval tentative map to a subdivision, a 1.82 parcel into eight single family residential lots. This is on the west side of Fortuna Boulevard, north of Alder Drive. So, I think I remember this one. This is over there by 
Yeah. This is going around the backside in that, uh, in that lot. Yeah, so um, when you saw this, it was the entire parcel. Since then, the commercial um, lot to the, on the east side of Roner Creek has been subdivided as phase one. And so um, the new owner has acquired the eight lots, the single family lots that are on the west side um it didn't can i ask a quick question yeah. didn't we yeah. say something about a secondary access to that or something because that was if i remember right there was something in there at one um, point i don't think so i'm sure it was discussed but there's a uh the city has a storm drain easement Right. It's part of the Roner Creek um, flood control project. And so you can kind of see it's probably about 50 feet wide. Same with this, these lots. Um, and there's no provision for an easement to cross to enter on this map. So, um, so it was approved. This is how it was approved. And I'll, we can look at the tentative map as well. So um, yeah, this project, the subdivision was approved on November 19th, 2018, um, City Council Resolution 2018-36. And the Subdivision Map Act allows uh, an approval of 24 months. So it, the expiration date is November 18th, 2020, but there is an automatic 60 day extension under which it's operating now. So it's technically its expiration is January 18th, 2021. Um, the map act then allows up to five years of extensions and the Fortuna zoning code allows those extensions to be done in 18 month increments. So um, they need to, you know, as long as this map has not been recorded, then they would need to um, return to the city with extensions every 18 months, basically. Um, so this is the area that you can see the Alder Drive gives access. And then uh, this is the, would be the new road. The improvements have been under construction. Um, the improvement plans have been approved and they've been under construction to some degree. I haven't been out there to see, um, but I know the Public Works Department has been working with the property owner, Abe Fokert. And I noticed that he's here tonight. Um, and this is really a standard subdivision with um, in the R16 zone with uh, minimum lot size of 6,000 square feet. Um, and this is the subdivision itself, sub the tentative map. Yeah, it was not approved with any um, connection or easement um, to the north, I think, because of the, you can see the storm drain. Um, this yeah. is the overflow channel for the creek. Um, let's see. Um, as far as the Subdivision Map Act and what it allows for extensions. Um, so again, I described the extension periods and you know, I, their, city staff doesn't see any reason not to approve the extension. Um, if, a plan, if a legislative body wanted to um, disapprove it or not approve it, um, you know, some findings, health and safety findings would need to be made as to why it's not in the public interest to approve the map typically. If conditions change radically, or if city, uh, city standards have changed, that would you know warrant a new design or something like that, then it would could be disapproved. But I really don't see that here. Um, and then, and then it, um, legislative bodies may add conditions during this process, um, and that was done for the McDonald subdivision two years ago. Um, it was required to realign the entrance to match up with the um, Atterbury Lane across across Ross Hill Road. So that can be done. Again, um, city staff hasn't identified any requirements that would warrant that, but um, I will hand that back to the Planning Commission for discussion. Well, if I remember right, we had a resident or two um, 
talk about this and talk about the flooding that they experience in their backyards and stuff. Um, yeah, I believe this should make the flooding better. It should alleviate that flooding problem. So it'll make it better for the existing homes, but what about the new ones? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're designed to drain to the street, to the new street, and then, um, you know, into, I, I'm not really familiar with the improvement plans, but I'm sure Abe can answer that. But I'm sure that, you know, it's designed to flow, to flow. it may get picked up along the edge here and then um, diverted into, you know, a, a single uh, drainage place, or it could be, I'm not sure if it just floods, sheet flows across the road. Um, but I know that, I'm sure that Abe can describe how those, you know, I don't see a problem with, um, with grading the lots to drain to the street. And I think, and that will help the, the properties to the south as well, because now this area is not going to be flooding onto their property. Everything from the north now is going to um, be picked up by that overflow basin, the Runner Creek overflow basin. So I got a quick one that they seem to bring up usually, but I'm just looking at access again. And uh, um, the road width, can't, I, I can't see on that map and I don't, and this is way too small for me to read. Can we get how wide is it? The access looks like it's wide enough, but the road itself and the turnaround, as far as, um, you know, what we got to do to get in and out of there. So the Can road I, itself Liz, is... Liz, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, Abe Folkart here. Um, I was wondering if anyone's went through there. We are about 95 plus percent complete with all the improvements in that development. Um, working with Public Works the whole time. All the drainage is in, the lots are graded, curb and gutters in, all the utilities are in. We have a little bit to work on Alder Drive and pavement left on this project. So um, I just wanted to put that out there for anyone who didn't, hasn't taken a look at the project on the ground. Yeah. So uh, yeah, hey, we're, man, we're like a month away. Point. We've been surveyed. We've got all our markers in. I mean, this, this job is, this project is pretty much complete at this point. Real close. Hey, so, so Abe, how wide's the road? Um, I want to say it's forty plus sidewalks through there. And yeah, we... there, so the reason it's more it's it looks near it is narrow because the parking lane on the north side has been eliminated since there aren't any homes there that would require parking. So that's why it is um, probably eight feet more narrow than. So it could yes, be like there's no parking on the north side of that, that lane there. Um, the only thing that really came up on the road was we did widen the cul-de-sac for um, per the fire department's request on the radius of the cul-de-sac. So that, that got bigger off the tentative map to what we have now. But everything else is uh, real close to what we have there. So, hey, you know why I'm asking, right? So I'm going to get this one about getting the garbage trucks, the fire trucks, whatever else, other kind of truck getting in there. And, you know, people deciding we tell them not to park on the road, but they always do. Making sure we can get in and out of there with that, with easy access to all that. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's been brought up. Um, and so we did widen, widen the radius there. And there are no, no parking signs going up all along that north side of that, of that lane there. Yeah. And this will be a city road. So it will have you know, enforcement ability by the Fortuna Police Department on that no parking. And then I will add that the, um, you know, Lon Winburn, the fire chief did sign the improvement plan. So I'm sure that's how, you know, that's how he's able to have oversight on the turnaround. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have anything? So I'm gonna open up the public comment. So again, Kate, if you'd flash that number again for us, please. Katie, you there? Liz, do you want to unshare? Oh, yeah. 
Sorry. Got it. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. So anybody out there, please call in if they have questions or comments about this. Why we have dead airspace? Everybody getting ready for the holiday? Are you ever ready? <laughs> Anybody participating in the decoration contest? Oh, we're on the map. <laughs> I live at Kenmar and Kenwood, and I think that my neighbors are going to win. They do it big, big every year. That's nice. Yeah, it's really nice that they're across the street, so we get to see their decorations out the window all season long. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the, they have a tunnel of lights, that house? Yes. Yeah, they're my neighbor, too. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm going to do the kids' Christmas pictures in that tunnel, I think, this year. <laughs> That's cool. Hey, Chris, Kathleen's aunt that lives across the street from you was complaining because you, your blow-ups aren't up during the day. She <laughs> yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like a, uh, a whole bunch of dead things out in the yard. Yeah. Yeah, she likes to see them. I've been planting uh, trees. So all, all the uh, phony trees that people um, bring in. Been mm -hmm. taking bringing them home and uh, relighting them and planting them in the front yard. Oh, nice. Okay, Katie, we getting anything on public comment? No public comment. Okay, going to close public comment. And let's move on. Anybody else have anything for staff or Fred? Okay, looking for a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution P-2020-3054 a resolution of the planning commission of the city of Fortuna granting an 18 month extension for the Avery Court tentative map. I'll second. All right. Can we get a roll call please Katie? Commissioner Blakely. Yes. Commissioner Halley. Yes. Commissioner Church. Yes. And Chairman Mobley. Yes. Okay. Can't wait to see it. All right. Let's move on. So we are on number three, consideration of 18-month extension to a parcel and subdivision, a 0.9-acre parcel into two residential parcels, 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 in size. This is on 11, 25 Angel Heights. So can we get some background on this, please? I don't think I remember this one. Yes, yeah, so um, this subdivision was approved on October 23rd, 2018. And um, this just went to the planning commission because it's a minor subdivision for four lots or fewer. And again, kind of the same situation, it was approved for, for two years. And um, under the MAP Act, it can have an additional five years approved in 18 month increments according to the 14 municipal code. And it's good for the additional 60 days. Um, the location is on the overhead, so it's at the north end of Knight Street, and then um, to the right is Christian Ridge Road, and then Angel Heights Drive. So it's at the very end on the north side of Angel Heights Drive. It is in a zone of, um, it's R110, so 10,000 square foot minimum lot size, and the B1 is applied in older parts of town where 
it might um, benefit from smaller set um, building setbacks. So it's got the smaller R16 setback. So five, five feet on the side, 20 in the front, 15 in the rear. And this is the parcel right here. And then it, um, on the northwest side is a bluff. It's, it's up on the bluff and down below is that extension of Ninth Street at the end of Ninth Street. So, um, so it's an elevation drop down there. And this is the tentative map. And you can see Angel Heights down at the bottom and they will be doing road improvements to um, add, to continue the paving. And the split, um, there will be a vacant parcel on the front and then a private driveway uh, to create access to the parcel in the back which is um, developed with a single family residence. And so the, the road will be paved, parking area will be paved, and you can see that there will be a paved um, fire truck turnaround. And that was worked out with the fire chief as well. And then again, the kind of the same situation, you know, this is an infill lot. It's um, in an older part of town where the infrastructure is in place and is satisfactory as far as the water and sewer and other utilities. So this will have the same situation where they will have a new um, clean out and a new water meter. And, um, you know, I think that's really about it. Everything else down here, these are the existing houses on both sides of the property. And then again, there is this bluff um, overlooking this lower portion of Ninth Street. And I'm gonna hand that back to the Planning Commission to consider the map extension. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything they'd like to ask? Talk about bring again, up. easy peasy. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, let's move on to public comment again. Anybody want to talk about this? Katie, please flash the lights. There they are. Okay, please call the number if you'd like to talk about this section. And we put up those blow ups th that day and uh, the neighbor across the road, he put up his and for some reason, all the blow ups are facing one another and waving at each other. <laughs> <laughs> I looked over the light. Okay, this is a little strange. They don't scare you at night when you're laying in bed thinking about these creatures out there who are conniving against you? Well, you know, when, when they're waving back and forth, it gets a little weird, especially when the wind blows. It's uh, when they start talking that we're, we're <laughs> That's when you pull the plug. <laughs> if I start answering, then you guys really got to do something about me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, cocktails, no cocktails before bedtime for you. No, no. Okay. Go outside and start dabbing them and letting air out. Okay, not hearing anything for public comment, so we're going to close public comment. Anybody have anything they want to deliberate about, or does somebody want to make a motion? Well, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution P 2020 3053, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Fortuna approving an 18 month extension for the Mills brand parcel map. Katie, can I'll we get a roll call? That. All right. <clears throat> hey, Commissioner Blakely. Yes. Commissioner Church. Yes. Commissioner Halley. Yes. And Chairman Mobley. Yes. All right. There goes another one. Okay, and this one looks like we just got a little bit to do on. So, motion to open to open and continue a public oh. hearing. To Ahead, um, no, we sent a supplemental staff report. 
Oh, that's right. You did. This did stay on the agenda. So can I go over it? Or Please. No, go ahead. I mean, you can introduce it. Okay. It's a motion to open and continue a public hearing to consider approval of a lot line adjustment, reconfigure lot line between two existing buildings resulting in a single family resident on each parcel. The uh, project location is 1235 Ross Hill Road. You're up. Okay. Thank you. Uh -oh. On the current slide. Okay. So uh, this shows the project location south um, South Fortuna Boulevard, where it goes up the hill on Ross Hill Road, and then access is from. Um, I, I think that's Atterbury Ad, Lane. And it's quite a large parcel. It's um, about 12, 12, 12 and a half acres. And it's up on the bluff. So it's a little bit hard to see from the street, but here it is. So here's Atterbury Lane. And then um, the two houses, there's two existing houses. Um, both on, it's a, you know, in this case, there's two parcels here, and this is the common property line. And the two houses are, you know, fairly close together. And they share a common driveway here, and they share um, water and sewer lines. And F, so this is the common property line that will be relocated in between the houses to create one house on each lot which makes sense. And it is in a trust right now. So, you know, it's apparently intended for, for sale of the two lots. And this is the, uh, the plot plan for the lot lane adjustment, Adbury Lane. And then um, the pink shows, um, they will need to create a, an easement, um, a road easement since, um, you know, now um, it's going to be split, so there half of the road will be on you know on each each one of the parcels, and it'll be a forty foot easement for future development. Um, both parcels will have subdivision potential, so they want to maintain some you know appropriate access for that. Um, oh, and this shows the new property line. So the old property line, the dashed line, will be eliminated, and the new property line will be the solid line here. So parcel one will have one house on it and parcel two will have the other half. And then you can see here also the shared um, water line and the shared sewer. They will create easements for those. Um, the city engineer did not feel the need at this point to require separate lines. Um, it's you know, there's a lot of construction that would be required. There's a, a steep bank here um, and it's quite a distance. So it'd be more appropriate to um, allow them to continue sharing the lines. And then, you know, sometime in the future when mains are brought up, if they're, you know, if and when they're, it's likely that there would be some kind of a subdivision here in the future. And then they could connect to the main lines at that point, so. Um, the only conditions of approval for the lot line adjustment are for the easements to be created. And other than that, um, you know, other than that, it's straightforward and I'll pass it back to the planning commission. Thanks, Liz. Anybody have any questions? I always like that place up there. It's just a huge lot. Hey, I'm gonna open it up to public comment. Kitty, can you flash the number again, please? You got to share those. Oh, thank you. Thanks.
So on this, it's on the, I think the motion is on the agenda item you sent to us. Yes. So does everybody have that email? Maybe Katie or I can read it as well if, if, if needed. I got it here. Great. Perfect. So are we getting anything on this? Anybody want to talk about it? Look at it. Okay. I am not public comment. Oh, thank you. We do Stay have here. the representative, the property. Um, Mr. Burchett is here if he'd like to say something. Please. Yeah, hi, this is Mark. I, I don't have any questions. I just uh, was here to answer questions if you had any. So, no, it's pretty straightforward. All right, thank you. A lot line adjustment, so, yeah. All right, so not hearing anything, we're gonna close public comment. And back to the Planning Commission. Anybody have anything they wanna bring up or somebody wanna make a motion about it? Anybody, I'll make the motion if nobody has anything to say. I'm not hearing anything, so. All right, motion to adopt resolution P-2020-3055, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Fortuna approving a lot line adjustment for the Ruth Crane Trust. Can we get a second? I'll second that. All right. Katie, can you? Commissioner Ooh, okay. Blakely? Yes. Commissioner Church? Yes. Commissioner Halley? Yes. And Chairman Mobley? Yes. All right, there we go. Okay, staff report, anything going on? Um. Let's see. Well, first, I want to thank everybody for attending the Zoom meeting, you know, and these are simple projects tonight. Um, and, it, you know, and sometimes it feels cursory, but they're really important, um, you know, to the applicants. And so we really appreciate your being involved um, and supporting, you know, development in in the city. We couldn't do it without you. Um, and then what else was I going to say? We appreciate your um, involvement in the, the planning workshop, the City Council Planning Commission workshop on the SB2 grant um, projects, you know, and, and we discussed the accessory dwelling unit standards and the um, multifamily design standards. So, and I think that the consultants gave a, a pretty good, darn good um, presentation and, you know, and the participation and, and the comments were really helpful as a whole, allowing them, allow us to move forward. And those are going to, you know, the standards will be brought to you as they explained. So um, I think it's probably helpful for you to have the, receive the presentation as well and know, you know, kind of give you time to think about things and be prepared for what's the draft ordinances that will be coming. So thanks for that. Um, and then let's see the status of the planning commission vacancies. So um, Rachel Moore appears to have resigned. So in January, um, the council, the, the code requires the council to declare the vacancy. So that'll be done in January. Since we haven't received an, a formal resignation from Rachel, um, we want the council to uh, make that, declare the vacancy. Um, and that will allow Jason Church to be official as regular planning commissioner. Um, and then uh, Gina McClendon just submitted her resignation. She, because she was um, elected on the school board, the high school um, board. So um, she feels like 
she, you know, ethically, um, it's recommended that you not serve on two local boards like that, that could have conflicts in the future. So she did submit her resignation. So we now then we will have two vacancies, one for the alternate and one regular. So if you know of anybody that you want to suggest they submit an application, um, they can get the application probably online, but certainly at City Hall. And we'll be um, noticing that, you know, um, calling for applications for the Planning Commission in January. So um, that's all I have. Does anybody have any questions or any comments or anything? Are we going to be having another meeting this month? We are not. So we're done. We're done this for the a, year. Okay, so okay. Merry Christmas. Happy yes. New year. Yeah, Merry Christmas, <laughs> y'all. Merry Christmas. Thank you all. Well, I'll have well, to drive you, by. And, what's that? I was just saying thank everybody for the whole year. Of This has been uh, yeah. uh, tiring at best. Um, it's just been a, a year. So oh. hopefully next year we'll get better. And this will, year will go out without a bang. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad we're bringing Jason in on for permanent, not uh, just yeah. an alternate. Yeah. Yay. Yes. Thank you. Like, I like that too. All right, everybody. Thank you. Bye, right. everybody. Thank you. Bye. Oh, wait, you guys need to oh, adjourn. Got, oh, <laughs> don't leave yet. To adjourn. <laughs> okay. Do we have a second? Our second. All right. Okay. It's official. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Right. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye. Bye.